method. Quickly, the farmer recognized the combustion engine as a strong ally, a new step toward operating economy, a driving force that relieved human hands for more important work. The tractor, new iron horse of the field, and servant of power on the farm, for long remained to shoulder the burdens that once strained the traces of a yoke of oxen or a team of heavy draft horses. In the same old fields where new crops spring forth for harvest each year, we see consistent changes in the mechanics of agriculture, new ways of accomplishing old tasks, always machines replacing hands and backs that bent heavily under days of swinging aside, always labor-saving steps ahead, always progress in the direction of more efficient farm operation, cutting, raking, loading. Each have come in for their share of modernizing, improved mowers, binders, and rakes that comb the field finer and faster and loaders that follow with mechanical hands to lift the crop to moving racks and on to the shelter of the mow. In line with other advances toward making farming an attractive and profitable business, America's roads and highways bring the farmer's market within easy reach. Livestock, grain and produce move speedily over ribbons of concrete to markets at exactly the most profitable moment. Electricity. The servant that makes its master foot loose and free from the drudge and task of the past. The extra farmhand that sows the cash crop of our time and helps the modern farmer reap rewards from his investment and labor equal to that of other types of industry. The power company plants its poles and stretches its lines across the continent through city and county alike. Yesterday's farmer pulls off his heavy, stiff cowhide. <laughs> keep in step with progress, told the starting mark in the race for independence, and dances, for he feels young again, and it is a new day and age. The faithful mother of these sturdy chicks is a generator a hundred miles away. She still watches over them when they reach the brooder stage, warming them, sheltering them. When full grown, the same mother generator supplies the energy for the artificial lighting that keeps her brood busy laying eggs far into the night, far beyond the productive limit prescribed for hens of an earlier day. A one-horsepower motor can do the work of eight men. It will work for you all day at a cost less than the food one man can eat in a single meal. And when the motor isn't working, it isn't eating. An electric motor creates the power that makes it possible to milk dozens of cows in a minimum of time. Gone are the twilight and early morning hours when a man is either drugged with sleep or exhausted after a hard day in the field, spent in laboriously milking a long row of cows, one at a time, from stall to stall, drawn the tedious balancing on a tiny stool and bending forward to get the milk into buckets by hand. The electrically equipped farm utilizes the value of time and labor-saving equipment. Electric milking machines are easily adjusted comfortable for the cow, efficient in operation, and wonderfully speedy. The motor itself is a striking example of compact, profitable efficiency. Inexpensive electric power and ingenious labor-saving devices it makes possible have revolutionized every dairy operation on the farm. The electric milk cooler has revolutionized the milk profits for American farmers. In the old days, it was an ever-present anxiety and problem, the keeping of milk during warm weather. Now a farmer can cool his milk, put it in cans at the proper temperature for delivery many miles away to a distributor in the nearest city. The dairy of a modern farm today is a model of purity, wholesomeness, and efficiency. Even the separating is done by electricity. Churning, that tiresome task it took the farmer's wife or an extra hired hand long hours to accomplish, is now also done mechanically, electrically powered. An unfailing supply of electrically pumped water brings a new measure of health and comfort to today's farm folk. General Electric Research has shown the way 
toward electrifying America's farms in the way that large cities have been electrified. The switch of magic on the modern farm, one of the 200 and more uses for electricity in agriculture. Sawing wood with a light, easy to handle portable motor gets the job over with quickly and without the inconvenience usually present with other types of power. It's a simple matter to move the portable electric power unit on to the next job. The wise farmer anticipates his needs for electric power by providing ample wiring and sufficient electric outlets for convenient plugging in all over the farm. True economy and modern farm electrification starts with a wiring job that permits the fullest use of electric power. In the all-important feature of balanced rations for stock, electric motors for grinding feed play a major role. In this operation alone, remarkable economies have been affected with electrically driven equipment over the time-wasting, costly practice of taking grain to a mill for grinding. Old-fashioned methods cannot compete with electric power. Small motors, too, find a host of duties in the farm workshop. When the time comes for hoisting hay to the mow, the farmer of today throws the switch and an electric motor of proper power raises the hay to just the place he wants it. Controlled rain. In the arid sections of the country where the irrigation of crops of all kinds is a necessity, electrically powered pumps throw life-giving water, reclaiming valuable acres for normal yield, turning parked soil into profitable ground. Even in humid areas, irrigation has proved profitable with low-cost electric pumping. The difference is apparent here when we see a plant raised under irrigation and one that is growing without controlled rain. This striking example leaves little doubt as to advantages and increased profit possibilities of proper irrigation when and where needed. Just as special electric equipment has been developed for other farmers, so have many special methods been developed for the market gardener and nurseryman. Today there are more than 15,000 commercial electric soil heating installations in the country. Wherever young plants are handled and marketed out of season, electricity serves the grower by removing the gamble due to backward season, producing crops on time, and permitting control of temperature conditions at all times. Now the purr of electric motors may well be included with other well-known barnyard noises, for its willing energy is being applied wherever wheels turn on the modern farm. Cutting insulates as with all the other burdens lifted from the shoulders of man by electricity, is reduced to a minimum of effort. When electric power is permitted to remove the yoke of primitive methods and to do better work at a fraction of the cost of human labor, it is bound to produce greater profit. There is no other answer, for on a million average farms today, electricity is proving that it does produce greater profit. And across the horizons of American farms, electric power flashes a signal that is like a bright new dawn for the farmer and his family. General Electric research, pioneering and accomplishment has proven to the world that electricity has lined up the vocation of farming in step with American progress. giving us the opportunity to see this interesting picture. <laughs> now, I suppose there are a lot of questions you'd like to ask, Mr. Moore. Well, I'd like to ask, uh, who pays for this line we're considering? We build the line and pay for it. All that's necessary is for enough of you folks to take the service. Power companies everywhere have been building rural lines for years at no cost to the farmer, where enough farmers were ready for it. How soon can we get electricity? Just as soon as you folks band together and make a decision. It will only take us a couple of weeks to build the line. Is it all right to start my wiring now? No, by no means. Don't make a move until you're sure the line will be built. every proposition, son. I want to do some thinking before I make up my mind one way or the other. 
Naturally, there's cash to be considered, proper wiring and equipment. There's always a cash outlay whenever you buy anything. Remember that, son. Sure, Dad. But it isn't more than most farmers are able to pay, it seems. Well, we'll see. We'll see, son. There's no great rush, I guess. Miss Barnett's bringing women folks home, did you say? Yes. They wanted to gossip for a while, I guess. And Gwendolyn had her jam to clean up. <laughs> she was going to give it to the home advisor, you know. <laughs> Gwen. Yeah. You've been a grand comfort to me, Grandma. I know I probably haven't handled everything the way I should. But you seem to understand that I've really tried, even though I am young and inexperienced. I always thought you did very well, Barbara. But I get so tired lately and, and so terribly nervous. Oh, sometimes I just want to scream and go all to pieces. Of course, dear. That's why I just had to talk to you like this. You see, I'll have to be going to the city very soon, and but, but today I feel as though I just must go right away. You want your mother, child. I know. Why don't you go right away and make her a visit? Well, you see, I... There is a reason, I guess, Granny, why I feel this way. I haven't said anything to you about it yet, but... But Jim knows, of course, and... And well, that is... Oh, right. hush, dear. Don't you suppose old Granny knows all about it? Why, that's six of my own, Barbara. You're going to have a baby. And it's the most natural thing in the world for you to be feeling that way. Oh, Granny, you're, you're wonderful. Why, you knew it all the time. Why, certainly, dear. But I knew you'd tell me, so I just waited. Now I tell you. Why don't you pack your bag and go to your mother for a spell? By the way, this very afternoon. Oh, do you think it would be all right? Why, of course, dear. Run along now and tell Jim. Go see that isn't him out there at the pump. Oh, Granny. Jim? Oh, Jim? Come in, Do you suppose you'll mind if I go? Well, what's up? You two hatching something? No. Well, that is, we were talking about me making a visit to Mother, and, and Granny thinks I ought to go this very afternoon. Would you mind, Jim, darling? Well, I'll miss you, of course, sweet, but I know you've been upset lately. A change will do you good. And maybe by the time you come back, we can have things a little cozier here. With some of your furniture and things from the city. Now, you hustle and get the four ten. Yes, and she can telegraph her mother what train to meet. Run along now, Barbara, and pack your bag. Oh, I'll hurry. You get the car out, Jim, dear. I won't be mm -hmm. Granny, thanks so much for everything. Hush, child. Hurry along now. Come on, let's pack. Well, Gwendolyn, you can start clearing off the table now. Where's Barbara tonight, Jim? Well, uh, you see, Dad, uh, she wasn't feeling so well, so... so she's going on a little visit to her mother's. Hmm. Can't take it, eh? Oh, the company. Well, go see who's at the door. Yes, sir. Mr. Holliday. Oh, Hello, Jim. Mr. Morgan, you know these men, don't you? Dad? Yes, how are you, boy? Hey, yeah. how are you? Glad to see you. Hi, Bill. Hi. Help yourself. Thank you. Well, glad to see you, boys. Hope you didn't interrupt your supper. Oh, no, well, we're just through. Well, some of the farmers hereabouts wanted Mr. Moore and me to come with their committee to see if we couldn't get Mr. Howard here to join with them and get electric service right away. Didn't you say that the rest of them are ready to sign, Charlie? Yes. And they're anxious to get Bill Howard to go in with them. They value his judgment in these parts, Mr. Edwards. You asked us to give you more time to think this over, Bill. We thought maybe you'd made your mind up by now. If you look this pit over, Mr. Howard, I can show you where the proposed line will run. And how its installation actually depends on your coming in with the rest of the farmers. You see, Mr. Howard, your farm is a vital connecting unit for the entire high line. Dad, will you come with me for a minute? 
Oh, excuse us, man. Dan, here's what I want to show you. I've, I've got something to tell you, Dad. It may make a difference in how you feel about this electricity business. You ask me about Barbara. Well, she's gone to stay with her mother for a while. You see, Dad, she's going to have a baby before long, and she needs to rest. She's been working too hard around here. I guess she'll stay on down here with her mother till the baby comes. Well, you don't say a, a baby. Why, it never occurred to me. A baby, huh? Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> now, listen, Dad. I like to have the house all wired and things in it to make Barbara comfortable. Easier for her when she... <laughs> when they come home. Why, you could even have an electric train running around for the baby this Christmas. Come on, son. Let's sign those papers. <laughs> Darling, you needn't teeter about so. We're not afraid of a little noise. Are we James William Howard III? He may be James William Howard III, sweetheart. But he's got his mother's blue eyes. Bless him. He wouldn't be partial. Would you, little boy, please? Oh, I've got a surprise for you. Ready? Yes. We love surprises. What is it? My, it looks simply lovely. Won't little Jimmy's eyes pop when he sees it? And the little darling loves lights. All babies like to look at lights, I guess. I used to carry big Jimmy here around, just to see him hold back his head and gaze up at the light. Well, Granny, you can carry new Jimmy now, when he wakes up. Well, Barbara, where's your dad? He ought to be here. He said he was going out in the barn to help the father with the chores. But I'm sure he knows absolutely nothing about it. Better go out, Jim, and see what he's up to. Why, Gwendolyn, what do you feel so good about? Have you been up to something? No, I haven't been into anything. I just saw the funniest sight. Mr. Norris tried to find the barn without the backyard lights. He must have got all tangled up in the washing. Sure, when I saw him, he was rolling on the ground. All tangled up in my sheet. Lord bless my soul, he looked just like my hat for gandy. <laughs> I guess I'd better go out and see what he's up to. 
stuff to me, you know. I used to visit my uncle's farm on the vacations when I was a kid. <laughs> we'll be getting short rations from this girl, I'm thinking. Oh, I've got nearly half a bucket already. <laughs> Say, Jim, why don't you get Mr. Norris to help you drag in that mule log? Fine, fine. <laughs> whatever she wants. You know, it really increases milk production. Well, how do you like our milk house? Oh, and there's a handy combination. A water heater to clean and sterilize utensils. And a cooler to keep the milk at premium quality. How do you like this for a workshop? This electricity idea must be quite a thing for you farmers, eh? Well, I'll say. We're certainly sold on it. Gee, Mr. Norris, we'd better be getting that log. Not till I get my overcoat. <laughs> That's simply lovely. I brought all of these things in from the city except my mistress. Oh, Mother, you know, it's simply marvelous how we can have the same conveniences here on the farm that I've been used to in the city. And, and it's so easy to get the work done quickly so as I can have more time for enjoying the baby and taking care of it. Why, that's just like my clean. Yes, and they clean beautifully, don't they? Gwendolyn handles it just like a toy. This is our workroom. Now, if you want to keep up with the Howards, Mrs. Norris, you have to have that husband of yours get you one of these washers. And one of these automatic ironers where you can sit down and iron your clothes beautifully in half the time. I expect you're going to enjoy this home ever so much now, Barbara. Oh, I love it, Mother. And don't breathe a word of it, but I think that Jim has gotten me a brand new radio for Christmas, and I think it's under the Christmas tree right now. It is about ready, Miss Howard. Yes, I know. Shall I set the table now? No, you finish the salad. I'll set the table. Yes, ma'am. You go in and sit with Granny, Mother dear. I'll get busy so we can have dinner on time and enjoy the evening. We're exchanging gifts tonight, you know. Dear old Granny, she's so excited over the baby and the tree and all. Oh, yes, bless her. And doesn't she look sweet in that black silk I brought her? She insisted on wearing it tonight. She's been wonderfully kind to me, Mother. 